Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. Today we finished up the book of Ezekiel, and we see something interesting because we get a new tribal allotment. Now this would make sense because the people are in exile, and they are looking forward to coming home, and Ezekiel's prophecy basically provides a grounding to say we will have a country again. Each tribe will have allotments again, just like Joshua had it. Um, what's interesting is that they're not divvied up like Joshua did it, according to um, prestige or the number of people in the tribe. It was done completely equally. Every tribe gets exactly the same allotment. Um, equally interesting is they don't seem to have any geographical bearing. They're just kind of um, dropped down or like hovering over the land because they don't match up with what he says the nation of Israel would look like in terms of a, a geography. Uh, beyond this, the nation of, of Israel never really did develop again, and so these tribal allotments up to this moment have never taken place. Uh, we just don't see that reality at play. And so this is, again, forward-looking, potentially prophetic, because we see out of the temple, that river of life, just like we saw in Revelation, the fulfillment of that vision in the time to come. We have this river that heals the salt, the salt water, uh, the Dead Sea gets healed, has fish in it again. And so we're just looking forward to a time when the land is going to be healed and God gives equitably out these, these judgments that everybody has the same measure. Perhaps we can see in this some kind of connection to uh, the parable of the field workers, where at the end of the day, even though they've all worked differently, they all get the same wage. And you know, so for us, there's going to be rewards and crowns in heaven, but really the, the effect is the same. Salvation, eternal joy, in the presence of the Lord our God. We're getting a glimpse of that here. And then we have um, the birth of Christ, which pushes us forward to the fulfillment of these things revealed in Ezekiel. And who I wanted to focus on today was that prophetess, Anna. Um, she was a widow for 84 years, and she did not leave the temple serving God night and day with fasting and prayers. At that very moment, she came up and began to thank God and to speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of it, Jerusalem. And uh, what I want to talk about is how she served God. She was in the temple night and day, serving with fasting and prayers. That was what she had to offer God was her devotion to seek his will, to fast before him. And when we ever think that, well, what, what can I do? What could I possibly have to offer God? What service could I do? We can go to Anna and say, we always have the ability to pray. We always have the ability to fast and to put our hearts completely towards God. And this was a service that God honored enough that she was able to hold the newborn Savior, this eight-day-old Jesus, as they came into the temple, and to give a testimony and a prophecy about him. Don't think you have nothing to offer to the Lord our God. You always have your prayers. You always have fasting, and those things are honored by God and indeed are good for you for the church to bring his will about. Well, let me know what you think uh, about Ezekiel. I'd be curious your thoughts um, and just be encouraged. I love you, church. We'll talk to you soon again.